Everyone's played the would you rather game, right? Would you rather read the book or watch the movie? Would you rather go on a beach vacation or on a ski vacation? But probably the most common question is, would you rather travel to the past or visit the future? We can't help but wonder about our species past and be curious about what the future holds. Even those who would choose to travel to the past must still have questions and theories about what our future might look like, right? Back to the Future, Star Trek, and Avatar all attempt to imagine what our world and humanity will look like in the future. But who got it right? What cool new toys and gadgets will we be playing with? What will humans look like in a hundred years? Will we all live the same way? How will technology have shaped our appearance, knowledge, and lifestyle choices? Important questions. One of the components of the theory of evolution, which Darwin made known, was the survival of the fittest. This theory stated that the strongest of any species will always survive, while any handicaps or disabilities will disappear as no other species member wanted to mate with them. Today, however, with the rapid development of technology and scientific advances, we can almost say that it has instead become survival of the smartest, or even survival of the richest. Those who have the knowledge and brains to develop new ideas and be contributing members to society, as well as those who have the money to fund those ideas and buy what they need, are those who will have the greatest chance at survival. Human genetics seems to be playing less of a role with the outcome more dependent on science and technology. One area which is developing very quickly and in which there are a lot of changes being made is in the field of prosthetics and engineered and manufactured body parts. The bionic man and bionic woman of the 1970s might soon be a reality and the next stage in our evolutionary scale. Bionic and prosthetic limbs are becoming more seamlessly integrated into the human body and are becoming more realistic and practically used for daily tasks. Scientists are even predicting that some people might be using certain prosthetics or voluntary amputations even if they do not necessarily require them. They will become optional surgeries, viewed simply as a way to make life easier or to enhance certain experiences or tasks. Prosthetics will no longer become a solution or treatment for a disability, but a tool for able-bodied people to use it as well. For example, hearing aids are now being developed not just for people with hearing impairments. Today, hearing aids can be connected through smartphones and computers using Bluetooth. Soon, hearing aids might be able to block out background noise to allow the wearer to focus on a specific conversation. Who's to say that in the future, hearing aids will be only used for communication? One possibility includes tracking health indicators such as blood pressure and heart rate. If a hearing aid could allow us to track and be aware of our own metabolic processes, then this could lead to better health and longevity. Well, this might seem a little far-fetched presently. Technology is developing so quickly that this could be a possibility for our ancestors 100 years from now if it is made accessible to everyone. This access to technology and science will be what determines the evolution of our species. If access is shared and given to all, then the human species can evolve together. For those who don't have access to the technological development, they risk falling prey to Darwin's survival of the fittest theory. However, it's not just in physical appearance and physical alterations that humans will change over the next 100 years. Genetic mapping, mutation, and altering will allow for human DNA to be controlled and eventually perfected. Scientists are talking about the development of programmable cells. These cells could be created in a lab and could be used to influence genetic coding and and the manifestation of certain traits in humans. Having control over these cells and their genetic coding could lead to the elimination of certain diseases, disorders, and other genetic or hereditary qualities. Being able to manipulate genes means that we will be able to control our genetics and develop healthier and longer living humans. Being able to program and control certain cells also gives us the potential to use certain diseases to attack other ones. This might seem counterintuitive, but introducing a disease to the body in a controlled environment could lead to a weakening of the immune system, which would allow for other present diseases to be more easily treated. For example, a second recorded case of AIDS was recently cured. The patient in question had HIV, but was more recently dealing with Hodgkin's lymphoma. As a treatment for the cancer, the patient had to receive very aggressive chemotherapy as well as bone marrow transplants. HIV has been found to attack a certain protein in the body.
body, with the patient's immune system weakening and being unable to fight against and protect this protein. When receiving the bone marrow transplant, doctors found that because the donor marrow contained this protein, the patient's body was able to absorb it, and along with a strengthened immune system, fight the HIV as well as the cancer. Basically, this is a long-winded way of saying that the strides being taken in genetic research and mutation could lead to future developments such as this. If doctors are aware of the specifics of the genetics and DNA coding, then they can introduce the proper bodies to fight disease. In the next 100 years, this could lead to a healthier and genetically stronger human species. However, some of these processes can possibly be used even before birth or even before any health concerns are identified. Today, humans have already begun experimenting with what's being called designer babies. This process involves the genetic mutation and selecting ideal genes when implanting an embryo. This would allow for babies to be born with pre-selected qualities and genetics. By selecting and modifying the genetic components of an embryo, the likelihood of a baby being born without certain hereditary or genetic qualities will increase. This could also allow for a reduction in the manifestation of certain diseases or genetic disorders. Looking forward 100 years, this could lead to a more genetically ideal ideal human species. There is speculation that this could also lead to the selection of certain physical traits which are considered ideal. In 100 years, this could contribute to less diversity in appearance and the disappearance of traits which society deems less attractive. When attempting to predict what humans and the human species will look like 100 years from now, it seems as though many of the changes might not be visible externally, but will instead be internal changes. Yes, overall, we can guess that humans might become taller, have darker skin, and a longer lifespan. However, the most significant changes will not be ones that can be seen at first glance. Bionic limbs, technological advances, and genetic modification may not be all that visible, but these will be the most significant changes to the human species over the next 100 plus years. It's very difficult to guess what humans will look like in the next 100, 1000, or even 10,000 years. However, what scientists can predict is the types of changes that are likely and why these changes will be necessary. As with every species, it is likely that we will face an extinction and with our knowledge and technology, we can allow ourselves and our future generations to be as prepared as possible. Whether it be living in space, living as cyborgs, or living with our current bodies with ultra-developed minds, the human species is the smartest to have walked this earth and will find a way to make our lives the easiest and most enjoyable possible.